is... Right, we got there. Joining us now live from College Green, uh, Culture Secretary Lucy Fraser. Lucy, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, I, I would like to say that I believe that the confidence in the BBC is pretty low. I don't care if people disagree with me. I think people are angry that they have to pay for something that many don't use. I don't think they think there's as much impartiality as there should be. About time you were addressing this. Why has it taken so long, Lucy Fraser? No, you're, you're, you're right to say that, that trust, public trust in one of our public institutions is really, really important. And you're right to say that uh, some people think it's biased and they're frustrated with the complaints process. And that's why today we're publishing the midterm review. And what that will do will enhance the impartiality of the BBC and uh, more, provide more independent scrutiny of, of the complaint system. Uh, Lucy, Keir Starmer later on today is going to say that the Tories have been going after, well, charities like the National Trust, the RNLI. We could now maybe add the BBC to that list. And Starmer is going to say that your tactics are desperate, divisive and damaging. Why go after these institutions? I'm not going after the BBC. Uh, a number of years ago, it was determined that midway between uh, the, license, the uh, charter renew, the next, the, the next uh, charter review period uh, is at the end of 2027. Uh, mid, midway uh, between the periods, there would be a midterm review of how the BBC is functioning. Uh, given that the last charter review, we made fundamental changes to the BBC. Um, so I've been uh, discussing in a collaborative way how the BBC can improve its impartiality, been discussing that with the BBC. Uh, we've come up with these recommendations, which the BBC have accepted, uh, because they think impartiality and complaints, uh, like we do, is really, really important. Lucy, do uh, they so accept? We are, do, you uh, and, do you and the BBC accept? You talk about impartiality and you talk about, you know, this having... Do, do, I mean, I read a great thing. The BBC shouldn't have criminal tools in its armoury that you said this morning on Times Radio, which I completely agree about. This prosecution of vulnerable people by the BBC itself is an utter disgrace. There are many people who don't watch the BBC who are being targeted. Surely you want to do something about those people, massively. Yes. Yes, I have... Uh... I have said uh, that I don't agree with criminal prosecutions uh, in relation to the BBC. Our powers are limited in order to change that. Uh, as I mentioned, we can only make fundamental change at charter review periods. But I have said at the next charter uh, review period, um, I will look at those criminal prosecutions. I do think for, for the news organisations that the, the public most trust is uh, the BBC. I understand this uh, review is I don't is, think that's is, true at all anymore. Sorry. Up. I disagree. I think well, I'm talking about a YouGov survey from last year. Oh, right, OK. Um, it, it's interesting, Lucy, because um, John McTernan was just telling us there, you know, look at institutions like the National Trust, like the RNLI. Um, they are organisations that the public love. And Keir Starmer will say, you are chasing after a strategy that is deliberately divisive. Do you not wish that your sort of line of attack wouldn't be on sort of pinpointing out those organisations and sort of getting the RNLI stuck in this, you know, discussion about what's happening at the channel crossings and instead talking to us about policy, what's going to happen to the economy, how you're actually going to tackle illegal immigration rather than putting the focus on uh, the National Trust? Well, I've been uh, the Culture Secretary for some time now, um, and I believe in generally talking up charities. Um, and uh, in relation to uh, what Keir Starmer said, I think he's talking down, actually. He's talking down and not showing Britain in a very good light to say this is all in disarray. I think that Britain is a fabulous place uh, to be in, and I think our public institutions do a fantastic job. In terms of policy, we do have a plan on all of those things. You know, the government has a plan. It's already cut inflation by a half. Uh, it it was, is uh, going to get the debt down. It has a plan on immigration. We've just passed a bill in the House of Commons, uh, which uh, I do hope the House of Lords does not vote down. We have a plan to deliver on all these things, because you're absolutely right. What people want to see is us delivering, and that's what we're absolutely doing. I'm not sure what the Labour Party and Keir Starmer are planning to do in relation to any of these issues, because they don't have a plan. Uh, Lucy, I've got so many quick questions for you. I know you're busy. Do you not think that major, sure. major parts of this country have gone woke? Because I do, and a lot of... Well, millions of people in this country do. Lots of people will disagree with me. I believe there's a lot of virtue signalling, and I think there's a lot of people of a, of a, of a certain age who are fed up, and I, and I completely agree with what Rose is saying. I want to know about meat on the bone. I want to know about the economy and the cost of living crisis. 
But, you know, I gave that example. It was a couple of years ago that a, that a, <clears throat> a stately home in Norfolk, you couldn't... And my old man at 87, he was a volunteer for the, for the National Trust, sat in long with us, I said, an hour ago. If they told him to wear a... You can't go to work unless you wear a gay pride badge, he'd tell him to shove it. That doesn't mean he was anti that. There have to be things that annoy people, and there is definitely wokery, isn't there? Well, I do agree with you. I think in terms of what we need to do you know, is take action on major issues, not talk about issues that are in relation uh, to the sidelines. What our national institutions uh, should be focusing on is delivering you know, the core parts of their plans, you know, restoring our fant and maintaining our fabulous buildings, you know, not focusing on uh, whitewashing our history. Um, I, I'm very proud to be British. I'm very proud of this country, and I think our public institutions do a fantastic job uh, but they should be focusing on those core principles. Right, just for time. Two um, quick we've, questions. <laughs> we've just been speaking to a former Ofsted uh, inspector. We know in school inspections in England restart, say, after that two-week pause. Lots of teachers that we've been speaking to, though, say the big problem for us is that one-word sort of indictment at the end of the inspection. Please, can that be reviewed? Are you going to change that? Uh, I don't think we've got plans to change that. It is a really important uh, that Ofsted... Uh, it continues its role in terms of uh, looking at schools because what parents want are good schools uh, for, their for their children and good education uh, for their children. And what the word does in very, very simple terms is give an indication for parents as to what the standard of the school uh, is. Of course, Ofsted needs to ensure that it conducts those uh, investigations appropriately. Um, but we have, under this Conservative government, improved uh, education across the board. I think 89, around 89% of schools are now good or, ex or outstanding, you know, significantly up uh, from when Labour was in power. So, you know, I do think those, uh, that the role of Ofsted is an important one, uh, balanced always, of course, uh, uh, making sure that uh, schools uh, feel listened to and heard. Lucy, final question. You've been great. Um, Steve Reid, <clears throat> Shadow Environment Secretary, was on this morning, and one of the big things that they're talking about is that these uh, fat cat water bosses paid themselves 25 million quid in bonuses last year, despite the fact that so many of them are ruining our rivers and our seas. And I actually think, <coughs> cross-party, everybody would agree with this. The Labour Party say we want to go further and we want to create criminal proceedings. He actually said, if the incumbent government want to implement this policy now, myself and the Labour Party will support it. You surely agree that what they're doing to our countryside, these water companies, whilst paying themselves ridiculous bonuses, is a disgrace, Lucy Fraser. There's a vote winner for you. Well, well we've already taken action uh, against water companies. Uh, we've brought in <coughs> unlimited fines, and it's very interesting uh, that the Labour Party are talking about this this morning because they voted against uh, bringing in those unlimited fines. So, you know, Labour all talk, uh, no action. Uh, when we came into power, uh, we had only 7% of overflows of sewage being monitored. Uh, now, uh, by the end of this year, we will have 100% uh, of those. So, you know, significant record in terms of delivery. It would be good to see uh, Labour put their, uh, their, put their votes uh, where their voices are, because they're voting against our environmental legislation at every stage. Luke.